So right now on the farm, we have about a half a million oysters. And each one of those oysters har um, filters about 50 gallons of water a day. They're removing nitrogen from the water and detritus and things like that. And so this farm right now is filtering uh, about 25 million gallons of water a day, every single day. And so the oysters are just feeding on the natural algae that occurs in the water. That's how they grow. So we harvest 52 weeks of the year. It never stops. So we're going to wax philosophical about life and yeah. existentialism? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. But no, so can you just say your name and where we are? Yeah, my name is Paul McCormick. Uh, I own the Great Gun Oyster Farm in Murchis Bay. And uh, we're in my garage where we unload our product for Fresh Direct. You know, in terms of, you know, why I do what I do, I uh, grew up on the water in South Shore, Long Island. I uh, spent an enormous amount of time fishing and crabbing and clamming. And, you know, it's, it's sort of a cliche, but it's true. You know, that, that whole experience really got in my blood. And so I, I went to school for environmental science. I studied fisheries and forestry and wildlife biology. I really just wanted to get back to the bay. And I bought myself a clam boat, and I became a commercial clammer for mm, four or five years. But fortunately, it wasn't sustainable, and so I had to leave the bay after a number of years and went on to do other things, but I never forgot about it. And for, let's say, the ensuing 18 years before I uh, became an oyster farmer, um, I was you know, kind of quietly working on how am I going to get back to the bay in a sustainable way. So, what, what made it not sustainable the first time you had to kind of come off? Like, so I was a wild harvester, so if there's a pile of clams out there, and there's five or six uh, men and women out there that are clamorous, well, whoever gets to that pile first is going to uh, bring home the bacon for the day. And if you look around and there's not so many piles left, it's over, and game over, and that's what happened. And it was very sad. It was, uh, that was tough to leave the bay. Um, but it was funny, the last couple of days on the bay, I thought to myself, you know, this is just it's a shame that I have to leave and wouldn't it be great if somehow you could control your environment out here, if you could plant clams, you know, which was just such a strange idea back then. But the funny thing about that was that parting thought was also the thought that, you know, connected my return to the bay because I discovered that, you know, there actually was such a thing happening on Long Island, small scale aquaculture, where you could actually, you know, as I said, control your environment. You could actually plant seed and cultivate seed. And so once I heard that, I said, well, that's, that's the way to get back to the bay. And in short time, I just started a farm and haven't looked back since. You know, shellfish aquaculture, where essentially taking a native species, putting it in its natural environment, it's feeding on food that's naturally there, it's natural food. We don't have to introduce any antibiotics, any cleaning agents, and no artificial processing whatsoever, nothing. We're up on the surface. This is where most of the food is located on the surface of the water column and also the oxygen, most of the oxygen. You know, our kind of, our value proposition is like working with nature to craft the perfect oyster. And so we're always trying to, you know, do that, you know, always working towards that. So, you guys want to see this oyster opened up? Okay. That is a plump oyster. Obviously, I have a bias. I'm a Long Island oyster farmer, but in terms of pure taste, you'd be hard pressed to beat uh, the taste of a Long Island oyster. Yeah, it's nice, sweet, buttery. We hope that when folks open the bag of oysters and they, you know, they hold the, the oyster in their hand, they just look at it almost like it's a beautiful object. Um, that we've really worked hard enough to kind of craft that oyster. So you see, these oysters have a really nice cup to them, a yeah. deep cup. A lot of the effort, I should say, really goes into forming that shape of the shell. Okay. And that's, you know, to me, that's what keeps things exciting. You know, trying to innovate all the time. We're trying to make a more and more perfect oyster. Great gun is all in, you know, as they say, hearts, bodies, and minds. I still love it for the same reasons I loved it when I was a kid. And, um, yeah, in a way, that's a blessing, you know.